We've discussed hybrids in here and we've discussed diesels in here. And tonight we're going to discuss a hybrid that's designed not just for fuel economy but also for performance. I could spend a lot of time talking to you about some of the innovations that this car brings to the industry, but we're not going to do that because we have bigger things to talk about. We'll save those for when we do the gasoline version of this car. We're going to talk about the most important thing, and that is how this car is propelled down the road. It's the transmission. The transmission is a constant variable ratio transmission, and because of that, it doesn't have a torque converter. So inside the bell housing where you'd normally find the torque converter, instead you'll find an electric motor and a starter generator. So let's do some math. You got 200 horsepower in the electric motor, you got 286 from the gasoline motor, and you've got 180 from the starter generator. That totals 666 horsepower which makes this car as fast as the devil. But there's good news. Pope Benedict's last official act at the Vatican was to bless this car, and that reduced the horsepower numbers from the devil's 666 down to 338 horsepower. I told you earlier that this hybrid was not just designed for good fuel economy, but it was also designed for performance, even though it does get good fuel economy. Motoman tells me that he gets over 35 miles per gallon with this car, which is a little more than what the factory claims. But Motoman's a bit of a skin flint or a cheapskate. He likes to adjust the settings and squeeze every drop of fuel he can out of the car. Remember, you have three motors, electric motor, gas motor, and a starter generator. But you can only run on two of them at any one time. You can run on one or two, but you can't run on three. So the combined torque output of the two motors is 254 foot-pounds of torque at 4,600 RPMs. The reason why you get the torque at a high RPM is because the gas motor is what we call in the business over square, meaning the bore is larger than the length of the stroke. If the length of the stroke and the bore were the same, it would be a square motor. And if the length of the stroke was greater than the diameter of the bore, the motor would be said to be under square. Some of the cars we've had in here lately have been the Mulzahn, the 911, the Ghost, and now Motoman tells me he wants to bring the Lexus in here, and I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, we've already been to the mountain, what are we gonna do with this? But I gotta tell you, besides being impressed with the technology of this vehicle, I'm also impressed with the build quality of it. Forget about the aerodynamic panels underneath the car. Lots of cars have them today. This car also has an aerodynamic panel covering the drive shaft. Now the rear suspension is made up of beautiful and substantial aluminum and steel links. And believe it or not, this Japanese car has a German style viscous drive coupling for the drive shaft. Think about this for a moment. As incredible as this hybrid is, as impressive as the technology is, if someone could just develop better batteries, this temporary solution wouldn't be necessary.